Hello, today I wanted to show you how to do odd count peyote stitch. Uh, the bottom ring here is an even count peyote stitch, which hopefully you already know how to do. That will help you a lot with this video. And the top one is odd count peyote stitch. If you don't know how to use even count peyote stitch, go back, I have a video for that one. Um, but today we're gonna do odd count, which is just a tricky turnaround, but not too tricky. You could totally do this. And that's what we're gonna learn today. There is a free pattern you could download from my website. The link is below in the description. You could also follow along and just learn this technique without a pattern. These are some examples of rings. The ones on the left all have even count, I mean odd count peyote stitch, which is why they have a nice center to the design. Um, and I really prefer designing with odd count. And then even count, you could still get great designs as you see here, but they just, it's harder to get, um, I don't know, symmetrical designs, and it's not as fun to sort of play with when you are designing, in my opinion. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, looking at supplies here, I am using size 11 Miyuki Delica beads. You could find the exact bead numbers on the pattern. I have a size 12 beading needle. I am using six pound weight fire line beading thread, and I have some scissors. And that is all we need to get started. Oh, and a pattern, forgot about the pattern. <laughs> okay, let's get started. Okay, so to begin, cut about five feet of your beading thread. We're gonna pick up the bead color that we're not using the most, just so we have a contrast, and pull that down towards the end of your thread, leave about a four inch tail, and then we're gonna loop around and come back up through it. This is just a stopper bead. We're gonna use this in the beginning just to keep our beads from falling off. And now you have this little bead, we'll pull it off later, it can move back and forth, and that will just keep the beads in place. And then following our pattern, we're picking up the first beads of the first and second row. They'll end up being the first and second row, and it's four red, one gold, four red. We pull those down to the end, and then we get this positioned, and we should have, this is what it should look like, and then we pick up one bead, we're gonna skip this first bead and then go through the second bead. Like that. And you should have this little triangle of three beads. And then we're gonna pick up another bead and skip a bead, go through the next bead. and it creates another little triangle. Now we're gonna keep going down the row like this. If you already know even count parity stitch, which I hope you do, you've watched the previous video, this part is easy for you. So we're just gonna get to the end and then you'll see where the first tricky part comes. There's only two tricky parts that are different from even count here. Um, so I am on my second to last bead in this row. And now you see I need to add another bead, but I don't have uh, a bead to go through. So what I'm gonna do is pick up a bead and I'm gonna come back into, if I could get this bead over, <laughs> we're gonna come back down into this bead on the left. Remember the black bead is not part of the beadwork. So we're coming back down into this bead on the left. And then when we pull it down, you have the shape that you're looking for. And then we just need to get this in place. So this is where there's a turnaround. So we're gonna go down through the center bead and also through the, be through the bead to the right. So at a diagonal. We pull that tight and now it's looking like we want it to. We just need to get our thread in place. So we go up through the bead on the left and through the center again. And then we're gonna go through our very first bead by the stopper bead. And then through the bead we've just added. Like so. And now it looks exactly like it would if we had a row of even cow peyote stitch. And we're ready to just work back along, adding beads in between the up beads until we get to the end of the row. So we're gonna speed that process up here and get to the end of the row. 
And the, the turnaround on this row won't be tricky. It'll be every other row is where you're going to have the tricky bit. So here we are at the end. And we have exactly what we need to flip around and go through that up bead. So we don't need to add a bead on this one or do a tricky turnaround. So we just keep beading as we normally would with even count peyote stitch. And we're at the center bead now. We're almost there at the end. Okay. And now we need to add a bead and there's nothing to go into. So here's what we do. We pick up our bead and we're gonna bring our needle underneath the thread bridge on the outside edge there. There we go, under the thread bridge, flip that little bead into place and then come back down through that bead you've just added. Pull tight and there you go, you're ready to keep beading. So flip over your work in the opposite direction and keep working. And we're gonna take one more look at that um, to really make sure you have it. Now, I know this part is going fast, but I do assume that you know even count peyote stitch for this video. I do have a full video, a couple videos back that will walk through this much slower if you are completely new to peyote stitch. Okay, so we're flipping again. I could get rid of that end bead. And now I am coming up through. And when we get to the end of this row, is where we're gonna do the tricky turnaround again. I've messed up here, it added two beads. I left that in so you guys can see this does happen. So I backtrack, take that bead off, and there we go. And I think I make another mistake. Yes, I pick up the wrong color bead, but I caught myself. Okay, so we keep going through here. And now we have the tricky turnaround again. So you pick up your bead, Slide underneath the thread bridge on the outside edge, just like that. Pull your needle through. And then I like to flip that little bead into place and then bring your needle back down through that new bead you've just added. And pull that tight. There we go. It's also important to keep your beadwork tight um, when you're doing peyote stitch. I've had some people tell me their beads are like, their rings are coming loose. Um, a lot of that is to do with the tension of your beads. You shouldn't be able to see any string in between your beads. So make sure you're really pulling and there aren't any gaps in between. Also at the end of this video, when we thread in our, um, our end threads, I'm going to show you some places you can make knots discreetly, um, which as a new beater will help keep your rings tighter. Um, I've had some people tell me they're having troubles with that. So stick around to the end and you will see that technique. But for now, I am just going to keep beating this. Here's one more look at that turnaround on the edge. Go underneath the thread bridge on the edge. Flip that guy down and come right back through. Okay, so for the rest of this, you're just gonna keep doing several more rows of this design. And then when you get to the center, you're gonna start adding the design. I am leaving that in here sped up because I just love to watch beadwork come together in time-lapse. Um, so skip through that if you're not interested in seeing that and meet me back here to um, close up that ring and take a look at some new techniques to knot our rings so that um, they're just more secure. Okay, see you in a second.
Okay, so here I am, almost finished. If you follow the pattern, it's going to be a size seven, um, but you can make it bigger or smaller depending on how you want it to fit. I am looking here and realizing I need to add a couple more rows to fit the finger that I want it to. Um, so I've done that and I'm gonna test again. You don't want it to be too loose and you wanna err on the side of tighter because it always will stretch a little bit a peyote stitch ring. Even if you make all the knots in the world, um, it's going to just stretch a little bit because thread and beads. Um, so now I am going to close this up. You wanna make sure on one side, your up beads are opposite of the up beads on the other side. And then we're going to do a little zigzag stitch to attach this together. So I take my needle and coming out one side, I go through the up bead on the opposite side of the row. And then I'm gonna go through the opposite, the up bead on the other side, and I just zigzag back and forth that way. Hopefully you've seen this before. Um, so back and forth across, sorry, hit the camera there, back and forth zigzagging. Here we go, almost on our last bead. And then I'm going to pull it tight and that seam is going to disappear. And then I'm gonna go back through that seam to reinforce it. And be careful not to break your beads here. Don't force them through. And now here when I get to the end, what I'm going to do is go underneath that thread bridge, make a little loop and a knot. And then I'm gonna go back through again to the other side. Um, now in my last video, I didn't show this because I don't actually make the knots myself. If you weave tight enough and you make enough tension, you don't need to make the knots. But I think as a new beater, um, it's going to be important to help you keep your bead from getting loose. So now I'm gonna do it again on the other side, make a knot, and then I'm gonna go through again and basically like just overdo it. Um, so here I'm going through two beads side by side, creating that tension like we normally do in the beadwork here. I'm gonna do it again, going through two beads side by side, weaving around them, creating tension so the string can't come undone. Um, whenever you um, want to know when to stop, like just do more than you think you have to. The more you do, the stronger your ring will be. Um, don't make it sloppy. Like with the knots, don't make too many knots. It'll start to look sloppy. I don't like to make the knots in the middle of the beadwork because that can look sloppy. Um, but that is how we're going to do it. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the other side, thread this other um, end thread here. And we're going to weave that in and do the same thing. And again, the more you could weave, the more you could um, make tension, the better for the strength and durability of your ring. Never force your way through a bead because they will break. Um, hopefully you guys haven't had to deal with that heartbreak, but it is the worst thing to be like almost done with a piece like this and then break a bead because there's really nothing you could do about it. It's just heartbreaking. Um, okay. So we are just about done here. There we go, we have the ring. Um, I hope you have enjoyed this. And I have a new book coming out in October that's gonna have tons of these um, patterns in it. And also several of them are available as little mini bundles in my Etsy shop and on my website. So um, thanks for being around and thanks so much for all of your support. I hope you'll subscribe and stick around. Okay, bye.